when I started with Homemade Method, I was um, in a bad place. I had gone through um, about seven years of one thing happening after the other. I re-injured a bad neck and back injury. I got diagnosed with lupus and was covered with sores all over my body. And then I found out I had the Sjogren's, I had asthma, I had severe allergies, and I had allergies to medicine. So every medicine they tried to give me to fix things, just mm -hmm. where most people, it would help them. To me, it made me worse. I'm so sensitive to medicine. Um, like if they gave it when they tried to do my anxiety, they give a normal person like 10 to 20 milligrams. I had to have two. They gave me 10 and I was up all night like a zombie. <laughs> but um, wow. I just really, the lupus made me almost bedridden, the medicine they gave me. Plus, I was starting to get agoraphobic because I looked like an octopus. It just had a field day with me. I had open sores and rashes. And if, forgive me if I get a little um, emotional about it because I still can feel the pain when I talk about it. My hair was falling out. I had um, to cut my hair so short I looked like the Tweety Bird. I had big bald spots. And um, I was just miserable. And I had to work like that. I covered all my sores. It'd be, I'm in Alabama, so it's hot all the time. And it'd be like 100 degrees. And I'd have long sleeve shirts on and high necks. And and people had no clue. Like, um, was it just uh, Greta that just said, I'm smiling the whole time. You know, I'm, I'm acting yeah. like I'm happy. And inside I was like screaming. I was miserable. And I'd get home and I barely had the energy to get home. And then I couldn't cook. I couldn't do anything. And um, unfortunately, during that time, we lived next door to my mother-in-law. And she loved to cook southern fried foods. Everything was sweet tea. So that's pretty much what I ate. And chips and junk. And I just, mm -hmm. I was so miserable. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, it didn't seem like there was anything I could do to make it better. Wow. So what were some of the things you tried to make things better? Well, I had no energy. So, you know, I knew I had, because when I got the lupus, they put me on steroids and that blew me up. I'm five foot two. I weigh 210 pounds. And um, I tried Weight Watchers. I tried South Beach Diet. I buy all the different diet books and just try and mix, mix and match diet stuff out of it. And um, I just, I couldn't get energy. I, you know, no matter what I did, I couldn't, do, I couldn't get anything. Wow. And just before I joined your program, I got to the point where I was so bad. My husband was panicking. He thought I was going to die. And um, he, he looked for alternative healing things. And he did find a doctor that had um, vitamin mineral program. And I started on that which started giving me my energy back, but I had to take like 27 pills a day. And I oh. have, a, I've had birds so bad all my life. I have a fundal plication surgery because I had burned the esophagus so badly that I, I didn't have a valve left. So they had to use part of my stomach to make me a valve. And when you're trying to take pills, they get stuck. So, mm -hmm. you know, and I go for periods where I could only live on liquids. And you can't get much energy out of liquids, you know, mm -hmm. so it was just a vicious cycle. But the um, vitamins and minerals started helping me. But when I was eating food, I was still eating junk. <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't know how to eat right. Mm -hmm. I did know how because my father used to have a garden and my grandmother would always make sure we had four vegetables with supper. But, you know, you just get to a point where your brain forgets all that. Mm -hmm. And you just, yeah. just try and, and do whatever you can do. When you're in a bad spot, right, it all it all piles on top of it itself because you can't move, you're in pain, you can't care for yourself or cook for yourself and then all the junk food is convenient and easy and then it creates that downward spiral um, where you're eating food for comfort but it's actually making you feel worse and then you feel worse and you, you want more food. So tell me a little bit about your relationship with you're food kind of starving you know so um mm. I really didn't I didn't really see that I needed a diet at that point I was like I just need to find some way to eat and eat something that's going to help me mm. but I like you said I look at food and then when I did eat 
I mean, there's not really a lot available. You go to a restaurant around here and you get fried food and you get mm -hmm. breaded stuff and you get sweet tea and all the desserts are sweet. So it's like, I my family all lives up north and I have a few down in Florida, but I had no support system. I didn't mm -hmm. have anybody I could call and say, what the heck, I need good food, you know? And so you just get to the point where you kind of give up and you figure, you know, for some reason this is happening to me and I just, nobody cares. And my poor husband, he was beside himself because he did care, but he didn't know what to do. Mm. So, you know. So was, um, then you met us and we cared and we knew I, what I, to do. <laughs> I, actually, it was funny, you know, because I was on Facebook because pretty much that's all I could do is do nothing. And your thing popped up and it started playing and I'm like, oh my goodness, I, maybe that's something, you know, I never really learned how to cook. Mm. And the only cooking I did was with my grandmother when I was a kid and she baked cakes and cookies and pies and you had to taste everything. Mm. And if you were good, you could lick the bowl. And But mm. something in your personality reminded me of her. And Aww. I'm thinking, you know, I felt like, it, it's kind of weird, but I felt like by joining your class, I would be with family again and somebody who would care and teach me the right way. And at that point, you know, you're to the point where I'm on disability, but what do I got to lose? I'm, I'm losing all my money paying for medications. So at this point, I'm willing to do what I can and see where I can go. And you made it work for me. And, you know, I've learned so much. It's amazing. That's so wonderful. And it is so inspiring to me, Dia, because the amount of women that come to the sessions and say, when it comes time to make a decision and they say, I can't afford it. And I just sit there and it breaks my heart because I go, you're going through all this suffering, this anxiety, this pain, spending money on medications, wasting it on crappy new diets that don't work. And this is like a real long-term solution about people who care about you created at the most affordable price possible for the expert coaching and the live events and the program recipes. And people like you are so inspiring because you made that decision to make it work for you on disability. And now you've completely changed your life. So, you know, well, hats off to you. When I, when I started, um, I was paying just for one medication, $500 a month. That was one third of my disability check. Wow. My, I wasn't married to my husband then. And if I had, didn't have him to help me, I would have, I wouldn't have known what I would do. Wow. Um, but, but with learning how to eat properly, it's got me off of almost all those vitamin pills because I can get what I need from wow. food. Wow. Yes. You, know, you taught me that. I learned. Yeah. I mean, I'm probably jumping ahead of what you want to ask me, but no, I, learned, I love it. I, yeah. I didn't learn. I didn't know how to use a knife. I was afraid of chef's knives. I always used one little kind of knife. I didn't know how to cut things. I didn't know how to mince things. You know, I did not know how to combine foods. I learned all of that through homemade method. And, yes. you know, a lot of people, I felt, I felt bad asking you so many questions, you know, your people, but a lot of people in the group had already known how to cook. So I'm mm -hmm. sure to them, you know, I was like a beginner, but then they all started helping me too. And it was wonderful. I yeah. mean, I got, I got so much support and I learned so much. And um, I love it. Yeah. Well, one of the nuggets you just shared there is, you know, for those who don't cook or can't cook or don't like cooking, one of our first classes is a knife skills class where we show you how to actually hold, you choose the right knife for the job and hold the knife properly and some basic culinary cutting techniques. And a lot of people who don't like cooking, it's literally just that you're not doing it right. You know, I cringe mm -hmm. sometimes when I see people chopping with, you know, a little um, <laughs> carving knife or whatever, a fish knife. They're trying to chop through a pumpkin or a lettuce. And I'm going, what are you doing? This is not the right knife. And when you know how to hold a knife and how to use those simple cutting techniques, you can be fast and confident and it doesn't hurt and it's easy and it becomes pleasurable. So you actually want to do it. So that's well, and the other thing too is I'm kind of dyslexic. 
So mm -hmm. I had to take some of the techniques that you do and kind of, you know, make it for me. Cause like you do that rock chop. I can't do that. I cannot coordinate. But what I do is I, <laughs> I hold the knife in one place and I feed the food under it, but I rock it. So it's not really moving, but it's cutting almost the same way you do. And I've actually got to the point where every knife, every time I'm cooking now, I choose that chef's knife. Yes. You know? Yes. I know how to use it and, and you know, it, it's exciting to cook now. Yes. And That's amazing. It really so what is. Are, what are some of the other changes you made? So you learned how to use knife. You got into cooking a little bit you, or, or a lot. Um, but what changes did you make to your day-to-day -day eating, for example? Um, well, I wasn't really eating well because I had so much pain and the medications made me sick. I didn't eat breakfast. I didn't eat hardly anything for lunch because at work I had a half hour and I just, you know, it took so much to eat. I didn't do it. So by the time I got home, I was starving and I would just stuff whatever I could in and then I'd pay for the price for it. And then I'd eat all night, you mm -hmm. know, until I went to bed. Now um, I'm still not a big breakfast person, but I do a smoothie. And it's great because, you know, you take a smoothie and you can you can put some fruit in and you can put some nuts in it. And I put craisins in it. And I put, you know, pumpkin seeds. I, I mean, I throw all kinds of things in there. And a lot of times I'll do a green smoothie with a spinach. And, you know, I do pineapple and mango and coconut. And, you know, it's almost like a whole meal in a smoothie. Yeah. And then actually this morning for breakfast, I had a salad. And it had um, black olives and sunflower seeds and craisins and celery and lettuce. And then I took two eggs and I over easy them and I put them in my salad. And so I didn't yeah. use salad dressing because I had the eggs to do it. I never would eat stuff like that. That is amazing. And that's so nourishing. I love it. Yeah. And how do you feel like your relationship with food has changed? I think that, you know, now I look at it as a healing tool. It's not where before it was just something to keep me going. Now it's like a healing tool. And, you know, that was other things I learned from you and your group was, you know, most people have uh, problems with their sodium and blood pressure being too high in their glucose. Mine was extremely low. So, you know, and that was one thing as I was getting to know some of the people in the group, they started to understand, you know, because I would eat things that most of them couldn't eat. And mm. that was one thing I learned, which your mindset plus you've got to listen to your body. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to anybody else's body. Yes, you're in the same program and you're cooking together, but you got to look at your own situation. And um, just for those who don't know me, my sodium has been so low, I've been hospitalized twice. Hmm. And so I was eating huge bags of Lay's potato chips just hmm. to get the salt. I was eating salt out of my hand. And um, your, your group taught me, you know, I can have celery. It's high in sodium. Um, and then the carrots for my glucose. And, um, you know, just different combinations of food. And it, it's, it's helped me so much better. And now the other day, I even had the choice. My husband and I had some chips in the cupboard and I had the celery and, and I went with the celery and carrots and a little cream cheese and, you know, my B8 juice. And so, you know, oh, I've learned how to take the medicines I used to have and, and have food now that'll do a better job and also help other parts of my body. So amazing. And Karen, this is live to the lady who asked. Hello, welcome. Uh, and so one of the stories you shared, Dia, was about Easter baking and you did a lot of baking and then you, the next morning you woke up and something amazing happened. And instead of eating all the, you know, leftover pumpkin pie and brownies, you did something else. Can you tell us about that? Actually, true. I don't remember what I ate. <laughs> I'm having a lupus day today, so my mind's oh, coming. Well, I'm I know I didn't. I know I didn't eat the junk. Um, probably if I remember right, I either went for a smoothie or something good like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's 
Yeah. I used to eat half a pumpkin pie for breakfast after Easter. Yeah. You yeah, know, so thinking, so wow, with pumpkin in it, it's 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 healthy. You said um you said I chose to make a strawberry banana oat smoothie. I sat down That's with right. my smoothie, okay. a cup of coffee, and my devotions and thanked God for homemade method. I yep. thought what I knew great. It was healthy. Right. <laughs> I knew it was yes. something healthy, but I love it. And I just want to highlight as well, um, before we move to your results that you did a post the other day where you said it was your first pain-free day since 2011. And actually, um, since I've really talked to you, I had nine months of physical therapy for my back because I twisted my spine in May. Since I went there, um, when I started that physical therapy, I had headaches every single day and I had pain. I am now down to maybe two to three headaches a week, which don't last all day anymore. I have had more pain-free days. I can mow my whole lawn on a zero turn radius in one day now where it used to take a whole week and I suffer for a week after that. And, you know, I'm, I've been pain-free quite a bit lately and oh. I'm very, very grateful for that. Your husband must be so thrilled. Oh, he's happy. And you know, I I I know you know the he's been cooking so much since this course because he wasn't into the program at first. And he would laugh at some of the stuff I made, the combinations, or I'd make some of your recipes and he'd turn his nose up at them. And then when I got to the um roasting module and we did the chicken gramolata and the roasted vegetables. He has been in the kitchen. Actually, oh. he got so excited that I got a kitchen renovation. And we now have a, <laughs> we have a coffee tea smoothie bar now. And um, wow. he actually cooked three times last week when I was, you know, we're, we're, we're moving. So we're living out of boxes and packing and stuff. And I kind of get a little overzealous now that I have all this energy and and, and pain through days. And sometimes I'll move furniture I shouldn't like I did yesterday. And that's why I'm suffering a little today. But, you know, look at me suffering today. Before I couldn't even get out of bed. That's and amazing. I, so you notice I've been fidgeting it a little, but it's because I have to just move around a little. But, yeah. you know, he has been awesome. It's been great for both of us. Mm. And I'm still, yeah. even though... Dia, Even could you I, tell me a little bit about your end results? Um, I think you started at a tight size 18 and what size are you wearing today? Yeah, that's what I was just going to go into for you. Yeah. I started stuffing my size 18 body into a 16 because I refused to buy a bigger size. <laughs> I actually in it today was thinking of you because I am in a 14 and now it's falling off of me. <laughs> now I get to buy a 12. So and um, good. I'm waiting to see on my blood test this week, but all my blood numbers have been good. Um, I've always been somewhat within normal, but my cholesterol is very good again. My sodium last month was one digit off of being in the normal range, which I have not hit a normal range. Wow. I've been way below normal for four years now. And they told me if it if I can either get that result with this test or into the normal range. I don't have to have monthly blood tests anymore. My glucose level was 58 and I, they wanted me up in the eighties and I came in at 84 last month. Um, wow. so for some people, that's high, but for me, that's great. And, um, oh, that's great. Yeah. My mammogram was great. My, my colonoscopy was awesome. And my, uh, esophagus they said it's the healthiest it's been in, healthiest it's been in 25 years wow and I am off of nine of ten medications oh my goodness I, I don't use my inhaler unless it's like now we're in in peanut and cotton season and so I do use my inhaler on days when they're harvesting but I hardly ever use my inhaler anymore I got off of my Brio inhaler. Um, my allergy medicines, I only use them for three months now during the cotton peanut season. 
And the only medicine I'm on right now is um, one blood pressure medicine. And that's because of the damage to one of the vertebrae in my back that is pinching the nerve to my heart occasionally. And it causes the blood pressure to go up and down and it gives me slight AFib. But as soon as I get an adjustment, that goes away too. And I was at Greta that was just saying, my normal blood pressure right now, it used to be um, when I first started with, and I had three medications to get it down. It was 170 over 101, I believe. My normal blood pressure now is like 112 over 76. Wow, that's and incredible. I, mean, I, feel, I feel fantastic. Wow. And you know I'm on a hi hiatus while I'm moving here, but as soon as I get back to Florida, I'm back in success plus. See you. Um, I'm trying, I'm, so I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm cheating some, but I'm doing so much better. And, and I was telling Maddie the other day, when I get to the point where I, I want to just say, ah, oh, the heck with it. And I hear your voice in my head and your voice says, what is the next healthiest choice you can yeah, make? That's it. I was about to say, there is no cheating on this method. You just next meal make your next most nourishing choice that's it and um dia how much money do you think you're saving a month on medications i have to be saving i, I mean seven eight hundred dollars and i'm i i'm i went on disability and i got medicare and i um only pay eight dollars a month for my insurance and wow. They have given me in the last three months, you got to have with United Health, they want you to have all these checkups. I've got like five stars on everything. Wow. You know, because well, I haven't had, I only see the chiropractor all the time now. I haven't had to see half of my other doctors, but twice or three times a year. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Dia, for sharing your amazing story. How are you feeling now? I feel great. And like I said, even when I have a bad day, my bad day now is better than, you know, my really good days used to be before. Wow. That's amazing. So.